Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today's talk is going to be about some pens I got from eBay from China. So one of the things that I enjoy doing is looking at new auctions that pop up and also exploring the year of the pen nib. Caught you there. So <clears throat> Basically, I saw these. The description was a little strange. Here's the eBay auction. But I love the 0.7 nib. I love the 1.1 nib. And these look like Jinhao 992s, even though the description in the auction did not state that. I bought four of them, two 0.7s and two 1.1s. To me, less than $6 delivered is a no-brainer. And um, I ran across a person a couple days ago who used to do calligraphy many years ago, so she may be the owner of one of the 1.1s that we have here. So that's kind of the fun part of this, and I know uh, a lot of other uh, pen aficionados and hobbyists enjoy distributing pens, turning people on to writing with pens, and it is an interesting approach and um, it certainly does uh, bring rewards to me. So these pens are to me an amazing buy because you basically are just paying for the nib because if you wanted to buy standalone number five nib from China the 1.1 or the or up to 2.9 these have a big range on it you'd be paying at least a buck or buck and a half just for the nib so why not just buy a whole pen you know, I invested in the Duckbill series uh, a couple months ago, and I've been very happy with those, and I still use them, and I did buy some more. And we will be comparing those to these pens uh, when we go through to the writing test. This pen is, is very well made. You may call it a Gen 3 992. I don't find any flaws in it. No cracking at the plug at the, at the barrel side. So, you know, it, it's just a, you know, a good investment an unscrew cap and it takes a little bit more than a turn with that cap liner the nib stays wet i've i've kept these for months uncapped them and they wrote first time one of the few inexpensive chinese pens that i can say that about so we're going to explore this pen in a little bit more detail and then put nib to paper what do i could do with a new pen is i uh strip it down this is that nib and feed assembly that unscrews out of the 992. Remember to remove the converter first. Here's one of those syringe bulbs I didn't really have a use for, but it fits perfectly on this assembly. Just be sure to keep that O-ring in place. This is the 07 one. The other ones are 1.1. Here's my mixture of a little bit of soap and ammonia. As you can see, uh, pretty good flow. It's not drawing up water as fast as I uh, would like, but it's not slow. And then we expound the soapy water solution. Again, the flow is a little bit on the weak side, but this is only indicative, not necessarily going to be the case. So now we're going to do a flush with water. And then when we're done with this final water flush, we're going <clears> to <throat> blow it out, paper towel it, and then probably let it dry for a day before we ink it up. Or I could ink it up uh, pretty much right away when I think that, um, you know, enough water has gotten out of it. But, I'll, you know, I'll run the converter again through three fills to make certain that that ink saturates and removes anything that's left so we get to a pure ink. Here is the um, Gothic, or I'm going to still call it a 992 pen, disassembled. Uh, some viewers ask how the converters disassemble. This one just has a ring that pulls off. I use my trusty grippers, my lobster bands, to pull that cap off, and then the whole piston assembly comes apart. Here we have the pieces that go into the section, the nib assembly collar, the feed and the nib so you know you can to me it's easier to pull out the 
nib in the feed when the collar is inside of the section but you know I pulled these out after I took them out and after I cleaned them so one of the things to notice is that this does say uh, Jin Hao you know that uh, interesting engraving style that uh, we see on the 992's you have an interesting nice clear liner and that liner also protects as you can see there's a a nut there that holds down the finial and the clip so if you wanted to take it apart you'd have to pull out this cap liner which I'm assuming is just pressure fit in there clear barrel one of the issues that we've all seen with 992's is cracking where this plug is fit into the barrel but this one at least at this time shows absolutely no cracking at all I don't intend to eyedropper these pens, so I'm not concerned about whether that's going to leak or not. And even though it might hold water or air now, uh, that plug could come loose. Don't know, I would call this like maybe a Gen 2 or Gen 3 model, so maybe all of those issues have been corrected because the Sailor Pro color this is based on uh, doesn't seem to have any of those issues. So that's the bits and pieces of the pen. So when you insert the nib and feed back into this collar, it is aligned. So what I'll do is I'll just slide them until I find a spot where they fit in. And this one's also interesting because it has that Jin Hao logo on the top of this collar. And on the opposite side is a little mark that probably is a cell that it was uh, injection molded in. All these parts are injection molded. You can see that uh, little feeder mark here where the injection of the plastic went into the mold that formed this assembly or this collar. So all these parts are injection molded. That's what allows the pen to be inexpensive. So what ink to use is always a question. So you, you've asked me to review some of the inks I got at the DC show. So I figured I would put the Sailor ink in the point seven millimeter nib really cute bottle you know obviously if you don't have the bottle and you don't translate uh, Japanese you have to go on the color that's here and when I use this in the demo pen I kind of enjoyed it different color so let's see how it works in this pen so the 992 fits well in the hand posts well to me it's a little short and light unposted so for long writing uh, and I and I definitely would post this pen and it posts very securely and and fairly deeply so it balances right here which is what you like at least what I like when I write I think right away you'll notice the challenge that I have. This ink is very light. And I didn't notice that being an issue when I did my test writing at the DC show. So it just goes to show you, even if you do try out an ink, you may not understand how it's going to work when you put it in your pen when you finally get it home. So this, to me, this combo is, is unusable. I'm not a fan of, of this type of light ink. so. I wanted to show you what it looked like. Well appointed desk did a good review on this ink, so if I'd have read that before I inked this up or bought the ink, I probably would have not have bought it. So let's uh, flush it out and put it in a different ink that I know is going to be pretty intense and dark. My Robert Oster ink from the DC show. When you look at the ink in the cap, it kind of has a nice dusty purple color, which is why I, I chose it. But it just doesn't come across like I'd like when I write with it. It's one of my new tests. I dip my finger into the ink and smear it on a piece of paper. You don't need a Q-tip or anything, but you end up with dirty, inky fingers. So let's do the finger smear test with Great Southern Ocean. And I think you'll see that it's much more intense ink, more saturated. So 
Let's see how it works in the pen. I think you'll see right away that its flow is much better, saturation is better. So I worked on this nib, I flossed it. Obviously I did a thorough flush on these. But then I looked at it under the loop and I notice it has a different kind of grind to it. It almost has a little bit of an upturn there. It's almost like a little bit of a bent architect type. It's definitely not a normal grind. So I inked up the other 0.7. And this one is what I expect the tipping material to look like. Or whatever is on the end of that nib. They don't advertise it. It could just be the way they formed the uh, stainless steel that makes up the nib. Let's see how this one writes. I mean, a world of difference. This glides across the paper. As you can see on this one, the, sorry, the vertical lines are half of the horizontal. Here, horizontal and vertical are all the same, which is what you would expect with a nib with a nice round tipping material on it versus the other nib which kind of like looks like that and like I said I smoothed I flossed so that nib in that other pen is certainly um, not typical but that's the thing about Chinese pens is you are going to get inconsistencies for a buck and a half they're not going to be fine hand-tuned nibs. They're going to be mass-produced and there are going to be variations and sometimes you'll get one that may not be what you expect. But, you know, I know what the nib should write like and that one didn't write like it. So if you only had that one nib, would you be disappointed with it? I don't know. Hard to tell. But it certainly writes with a finer line than I would like for a 0.7. Now for the fun nib. I mean, I have a number of these number five stub nibs, and they are all very, very smooth, wet, a great writer. And with this ink, yeah, I think it really works like a good combo. Writing over the camera, sometimes you're off a little bit, but this is not as sensitive to angle as some of a sharper stub might be, like the Lamy stubs that I have. But, you know, for giving yourself a nice line, I really enjoy this nib. These are those duckbill pens that I first got involved in buying a pen for a buck and a half just for the nib and found out that the pen was pretty nice. So the newer versions have a black cap liner, which I kind of feel looks a little nicer than the white cap liner here. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same on the pen. It has a pull-off cap, which makes it quick to use. And here's another 0.7. Let's see how it compares. I mean, this line is nice and wide. And this is an intense ink. This is Scribe's Jellyfish, that permanent turquoise type of ink. I love it in this pen. And this is the pen that really got me excited about the 0.7 nibs that are in, you know, an option in this number 5 size. So it fits 992s. This one, the Moon Man pens, you know, the Wong Kai, um, the, the Leica, the Moon Man M2. So you may ask, what about a different ink in a, this 1.1 stub? So we have this one. We'll get the light to reflect off of it. But you can see this is a classic stub. There's no tipping material on it. So this is, again, another Scribes ink. It's a waterproof document ink, Plung Pi. They call it Fuchsia ink. One thing that is interesting is you can 
maybe you have 10 minutes how we can do it. We can see how that glitter is in the uh, feed there and section. But it doesn't interfere with the flow. And I just like the color. So now for that all important rating. And I have to rate them based on nib as well as pen. So the 1.1, I give it an 8.7. I really enjoy it. You can't go wrong with a buck and a half. I mean, this is value, all in caps. And the 992 pen, you know, the cracking issues, which if you use a converter is not a problem, but I'm impressed with the feed. And now that we got a great variety of nibs for it, so then we go to the 0 0.7 and I'm going to give it a 7.5 because of the variations and this is the good one. So it's still a value but it's not all caps. You know if you got this nib I think you'd be very happy with it. And it's not really is that much wider than the original nib in the 992 but it does give you a little variations and it is incredibly smooth. So another journey that became more complex than I expected, but I think in the end all of us have a better understanding of, of these pens and buys on eBay and the risks associated with that, but that's what the fun part is. I mean, if life was all consistency and everything that you wanted it to be, it'd be pretty boring. At least that's my opinion. So thank you for watching. Yeah, these pens you can leave set for a while and they start up right away. As I said, you can have them cap for a month or two and they'll write right away. That cap liner really keeps the, the, the nib wet. So we've reached the end of this video. May you have many great, exciting, stimulating, thought-provoking pen experiences and just amazed at the amount of variety that's out there and you don't have to spend much money, less than a cup of coffee, even the cheap coffee in the diners. And you can have yourself an excellent writing instrument that you can experience the pleasures of ink on paper. So until we get together again, bye for now. This is one of my favorite green inks. And again, if the nib is not rightly aligned, it's not going to write properly. So. Enjoy your pens. Have a great day.